My guest in the Nematayon today is Denny Poisson, also known as Foolish Fish, host of the Hello. Foolish Fish YouTube channel and author, magical practitioner. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Bernard. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so you're very well versed in magical traditions and... Um, we chatted a bit about our love for the Sandman audiobooks. Uh, and uh, so I, I know we have very much in common. What has been your favorite childhood story? So it's a, it's a good question. There are a lot, obviously many, many stories that have been central to my childhood, but um, I was very, very interested in stories as a child. The one that I've picked out of many that could have been quite similar. The one that I picked is The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton. Yeah. Um, the, the, there's there's so much going on here. Okay, a little uh, mention at the beginning, I'm very aware how problematic Enid Blyton is. Um, uh, I've... I've acquired a, a copy of the original book um, uh, or series of three books to read to my son, because I'm aware that there's a new edition with, uh, you know, updated words, a little bit like what they've been doing with um, uh, with um, uh, Roald Dahl recently. Um, uh, in this case, I'd say it's probably warranted some of the sentences that I came up <laughs> against in this, uh, in, in the Magic Faraway Tree were truly, truly problematic. Um, uh, nevertheless, that that completely blew over my head when I was four years old listening to these stories of course and um uh, yeah it 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 occurred to me that um uh, that uh, as i was rereading these stories to my son it occurred to me how different um what we search for in story as a child is from what we search for in stories as as grown ups right yeah yeah so uh in the german speaking world which most of my listeners belong to the magic faraway tree is not very well known. So could you mm. summarize it a bit? Of course, of course. So the idea is that you have these um, three children um, who have to go, uh, uh, have to leave the city uh, to go in and stay in the countryside. And uh, the, the, I guess the father loses his job and has to go in, uh, and, and live in, in this little little cottage in, in the countryside. They're all very, very sad. And um, they get used to it little by little, life in the countryside. And there's this forest and... Um, uh, they decide to to pack picnics. Enid Blyton always has these il elaborate picnics, <laughs> mouth watering descriptions, and uh, they take this picnic out into the forest, and um, they get permission, of course, and they have to wait for the right day when there aren't too many chores, and they finally get into the forest, and um, once they're in the forest, they uh, are uh, accosted by a, a rabbit. Uh, we'll talk about Alice in Wonderland in a moment, I guess, but <laughs> but uh, but the rabbit takes uh, them to, uh, to some gnomes, I guess. They find some magical, yeah, uh, beings in the forest and um uh little by little they get closer and closer to this gigantic tree and they they uh, um, uh, as they approach the tree they they realize that they have to go home and they ah oh, so <laughs> another few weeks go by until they have time to get back to the forest and sure enough this tree as they start to climb it there are little windows in the tree and, uh, uh, you know, certain uh, beings in the tree who are friendly and some less friendly. There's a uh, there's an angry pixie. They look into his th through his window and he's oh, everyone keeps looking in through my window, et cetera, et cetera. And they get to the very top of the tree. And um, uh, in, again, uh, so some 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 other um, uh, classical um characters like a washerwoman who always dumps her washing uh, washing uh, water down the tree so they all get drenched unless they're looking out for it and then they get to the top of the tree and there's this guy called Moonface who's got a big round uh, yellow face like the face of the moon who um, who is on the very very top apartment <laughs> to so to say of this tree mm -hmm. uh, who tells them about the lands at the top of the tree and um, um, there's there's a cloud at the top of the tree and um, uh, these lands are on some kind of rotation and every 
so often um, the entrance to these different lands rotates and the next land appears and sometimes it's the land of toys and sometimes it's the land of everything being upside down and sometimes it's the land of um, uh, whatever it might be sometimes it's very scary lands as well you know um, uh, they, they get into all kinds of trouble and uh, sometimes the the entrance actually goes away and they they have to find other ways home and stuff like this anyway so it's all high adventure <clears throat> but this idea for me of um of a of a, a transition mm. between the real world and a magical world captured my imagination in a way i can't begin to describe uh, <laughs> uh, and and that i realized you know as as i was thinking to myself you know what is the because you you asked me a few days ago, you know what what uh, I'd like to interview about uh, interview you about the the story that made a biggest impact on you as a child, and I was realizing that all the stories that really affected me deeply were not the stories with the greatest plot. They weren't the ones with um, uh, with um, conflict and resolution. They weren't the ones with classical plot structures. They were the ones where there was uh, uh, the real world and then a transition into a magical world. That was what, oh my goodness, that 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 set my brain on fire, you know? I was like, oh my goodness. Um, uh, I was having a lot of dreams at the time, right? My, my dream life was very uh, rich and some, sometimes troublesome because it was too rich, you know? I, I'd go to, I, I was afraid of going to sleep because of the how vivid my dreams were as a child and um uh, and and i suppose that spoke to me in a way in this um you know just trying to work out the 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 the, the liminal space between the real world and the less real worlds are <laughs> hard to say are they in fact less real or not i, I think they are as real as our world just indeed, as, indeed. As, uh, just, physical. Just, a, yeah. just a different a different yeah. space yeah yeah and, and stories can be such a liminal place to cross over that's exactly right so this yeah. is actually what I, the conclusion that i came to in my mind as i worked <laughs> it all out uh we were talking about um audio books earlier one we were saying that the 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 audio version of the sandman uh was in my opinion possibly even superior to the comics themselves with the you know, with the, the 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 tv series being yes. very good be, becoming at a very distant third place um uh, but uh, but i had this series of of books as a uh, books of magazines that came out when I was they started coming out when I was about three years old I guess uh, they're called Storyteller um, and they came out fortnightly you had a magazine full of the stories themselves and beautiful illustrations and they came with a little cassette tape um, oh. uh, right <laughs> and there were there were usually about eight stories per cassette tape there was uh, usually a, a, a serial uh, where you'd get part one, part two, part three, and then you'd get maybe a couple of poems, uh, and then you'd get a couple of uh, classical stories. So this is where I learned all my Greek mythology. Um, uh, this is where uh, I... I I, I I read about uh, P Pinocchio. There was a fantastic, complete production of Pinocchio. Mm. You know, great sound effects, and it was really immersive, and so on and so forth. Um, and there were some modern stories as well, um, some stories that that were freshly written uh, for children. And I realized that the stories that I really gravitated to towards tended to be the modern stories which had that element of a guy going about his business and suddenly coming across a magician in the street and helping him out and the magician says hey come to my house and I'll show you some cool stuff that you've never seen and he has a meal with a magician and mango trees growing out of the table and you know <laughs> etc etc et but you know just just amazing stuff and then he gets goes home and um He's back to the real world kind of thing. So these weren't the classical stories, but the classical stories, the, those Greek myths and these um, and and Pinocchio, which is a classical um, um, uh, example of a, an initiation story, isn't it? Mm. Um, uh, uh, these were all the stories that I found difficult to get into as a child. They fascinated me to an extent, but they didn't they didn't set me off like these other stories did. 
But then I realized as I got older that these are, in fact, not the stories about the, 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 the transition. They are the tools for the transition, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen to that. That's... There we go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and I like the Magic Faraway tree because it's such a great version of the Axis Monday. Uh, it's it's like yes. Yggdrasil with all the worlds uh, hanging on Absolutely. this tree. Absolutely. And... Yeah. I mean, you can imagine what how my eyes lit up when I when I first uh, uh, realized that there was such a thing as a tree of life. You know. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize <Yes>. that one. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But then, of course, it was you know Alice in Wonderland, the same thing. You know, being taken through the rabbit hole into uh, into another world. Um, uh, the Wizard of Oz, of course. You know, uh, 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 Ali, uh, uh, Dorothy being taken off in a whirlwind into a a land of Technicolor, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so on. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So. Um, uh, uh, again, not about not about detective stories. You know, when I when I started reading detective stories, I thought, oh my goodness, when is this thing going to end? You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no magic happening. You know, it's mm. but it, of course it's it's this is what grown ups uh, enjoy, isn't it? It's like a little puzzle. Okay, I can anticipate what's going to happen at the end of this story. Okay, I can I can relate to this, you know, or or, or, or whatever. Uh, but uh, but yes, as a as a child. It's 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 the it's the people in a magical situation, real people in a magical situation. Yeah, that that that's the mm. that's the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me of uh, the favorite childhood story that uh, Philip Cargom told me about. Oh yes, uh, yeah. It was the Narnia stories, and very much the same, like this this portal to another world. Um, oh, I hesitated with the Narnia stories. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I thought <Absolutely>. so. <laughs> You know. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I've got them. I've got the Narnia stories right here. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, and again, you know, I, same situation. I, I, I read the stories to my to my son, and oh, it was such a chore getting through these stories. And I was like, ah. but but again, you know, it's because I'm seeing them with the eyes of an adult, and um, and and looking for for a coherent story, and seeing just propaganda instead <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um but but that's not what i saw as a child what i was i saw as a child was was some some kids uh in a in a very boring mundane situation going through a wardrobe into a into a land of of snow and satires right and that was um yeah yeah <laughs> so um looking back at, as an adult to these stories mm -hmm. uh, do you use them today in a similar fashion to uh, go to another world, to interact with these worlds? Very much so. <laughs> so my 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 grandfather, um, when I was yeah maybe maybe five years old, uh, told came. I, I was living in France. My grandfather and grandmother, my mother's English, so my my grandparents on my mother's side lived in in the UK they came over to visit us in France once we would usually go to visit them but they came over to us once I guess maybe once or twice grandmother would come over more often um and my grandfather said to me something that um <laughs> that had an effect he said to me you know if you're good for two weeks uh, it, swans will come and pick you up and take you to a land of taps and when you turn on the taps, there are taps for whatever you like. And if you want a railway, uh, a toy railway, uh, um, then you just turn on the tap for the toy railways and you'll get your toy railway. <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and whatever it is that you want, there are taps for them and you just turn on the tap and you can get the thing that you're after. So I was like two weeks. So th that's like. How many Saturdays is that? And he explained <laughs> to me. And <laughs> uh, so, okay, all right, all right. So, so I did my very best. But then it occurred to me, you know, really, swans come to pick me up. That that's 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 unlikely. It, I mean, it's worth a shot. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and and I guess that's when I started to understand the value of of the imagination, right? Because the amount of time that I spent in this land of taps 
was real, <laughs> right? Yeah. Of course, my my physical body never went there, but um, but 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 I, you know, I, I yeah, I spent a lot of time in this land of taps, and uh, you know, imagining what it was going to be like, and um, uh, yeah, and if if I if if I if I um, uh, took too much stuff from the land of taps, it would be ducks taking me home, uh, <laughs> things like this, you know, um, uh, but. Um, but yes, and so and so, these were the kinds of things that really um, stoked my imagination as a child, and um, uh, and and uh, you know I, I I enjoyed writing stories, uh, I enjoyed telling stories, and uh, I, I enjoyed um, reading and 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 reading stories and listening to stories, of course. Um, uh, but uh, but but those were very much the the training basics uh, of of what I do today, right? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, you know, those are the spaces that you need to be comfortable with and uh, to be familiar with, in order to notice the differences that happen as a result of magical practice. Um, uh, and of course you can, you can also go into those spaces to make the changes, right? Um, uh, the, 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 I, I, so, uh, you know, yeah, you know, I had this, this, uh, um, YouTube channel Foolish Fish, and uh, there there are memberships for that, uh, uh, uh for, through Patreon and, um, um, members, of, uh, from a certain level I guess from level two they get access to uh, guided meditations and that's kind of what I'm doing in those guided meditations I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm describing worlds in which they can make in which members can make changes right in which members can can move things around so that they're so that they can have an effect on the real world yes because it works because yeah. it works yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah 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 Denny, thank you so much for taking us on this one ride to other worlds <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah using uh, in, in, as, as i see it our imagination is an organ of perception and yes. and uh we cannot only use it to perceive something, but to change something. And yes. Yeah. So oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much, Bernard, for this opportunity to talk about this stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's very close to my heart as well. Yeah, it has been an honor. Thank you very much. I'm very much looking forward to talk with you again soon. Have a Thank great you so time. much. <laughs> bye Take bye. Care. Don't bye. Want this magic. Here.